Right now here at five o'clock, a Louisville man accused of rape and sodomy two years ago, back in a courtroom today, now indicted again on those same charges. It's our top story at five o'clock. Hello, everybody. I'm Doug Profit, and I'm Shay McAllister. Antonio Coleman has been entangled in the legal system for years. Most recently, he was accused of exposing himself to women near downtown Louisville. Senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez and photojournalist Emma Gafter explain how this case could move forward. In a surprising turn of events, the Commonwealth's attorney has decided to pursue Antonio Coleman's 2022 rape case again. It was dismissed last year, but prosecutors believe their case this time around will yield a different result. We have been in contact with the victim. Um, he is willing uh, to testify this time, so we, that is why we believe that the outcome um, in, in this procedure would be different than the last. And what has become a repeated cycle, 31-year-old Antonio Coleman back in a Jefferson County courtroom Thursday. He's been ruled incompetent to stand trial a handful of times in just the last couple years alone, most recently in May, meaning he continuously has been entered into psychiatric hospitals and then eventually released back to the public. Why is he back in jail? He doesn't understand why he's back in jail. He doesn't understand what's happening here, like what we're trying to do or what the Commonwealth is trying to do. In the 2022 rape case, the judge said there wasn't sufficient evidence to support the charges. Coleman, who's been at Central State Hospital since last month, sat quiet during the hearing. His defense attorneys argue nothing has changed since 2022. They say Coleman remains intellectually disabled. They told the judge that retrying this case is cruel and unusual punishment. We believe that it is improper and unconstitutional for a person to be indicted, for that person's case to be presented to be indicted when the Commonwealth knows full well that he is not competent and that there is zero possibility that he's going to attain competence in the foreseeable future. Under state law, there is an avenue for Coleman to be involuntarily committed into a correctional psychiatric center. That's if he's proved to be a danger to society. But to do that, a judge must rule there is sufficient evidence to support his guilt of the crimes. Back in 2022, that was denied. The question, whether that happens again. Isaiah Kim Martinez, WHAS 11, on your side. Antonio Coleman and his attorneys are due back in court on July the 12th. That's when the judge is expected to decide on the defense's request to dismiss this case. Summer break for so many students in Louisville and a branch of Metro governments now announcing new opportunities to keep them busy. This comes on the heels of a very violent week in the city. In the past 28 days, 18 people were killed right here in the Metro. That includes at least five teens who were shot in a parking lot at a party. Some officials call the summer the deadliest 100 days for teenagers. Our Ian Hardwood and chief photojournalist Philip Murrow report summer youth programs are one way the city's addressing the issue. Only collectively, if we come together, only through that method can we address violence in our community and ensure a safe summer for our youth and our families. This Saturday marks the safe summer kickoff for the Office of Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods, also known as OCEAN. At 10 different parks and community centers, neighborhood organizations will use the office's resources for fun like live music and games, but also health screenings and trauma counseling. And after the events kick off on Saturday, Ocean plans to spend 100 straight days here in the Park Hill neighborhood using their neighborhood by neighborhood approach, which they say has contributed to a 35% decrease in gun violence over the past two years. And so we're trying to bring more people into this family so that we can keep them engaged and loving one another so that we can be one strong community. Beyond the kickoff, the Louisville YMCA is one of several ocean partners running summer programs for kids. For young ones, they offer basic swim lessons, but older teens can go through a five-week course and become lifeguards. You have to combat it one step at a time. Will Pitts is a partner, too. His program this summer uses sports and young mentors to put kids on a better path. Sometimes the results can take years to see. Pitts recently caught up with a couple of kids who came through his Shoot Balls Not Guns mentorship as high school freshmen. And now they are attending college um, on scholarships. So um, just to see that come full circle, man, is super awesome and I'm proud to be a part of it. 
This approach is meant to prevent violence before it happens, and the Funds for the Arts nonprofit is working in a similar way by training young artists in music, drawing, and painting over the summer. The larger you can build the network, the stronger you can build the collective, the, the more likely you're going to achieve success. Paul Callanan leads Ocean. He believes building community will discourage violence. By engaging people at recreation programs, at the community centers, or swim programs, or anywhere else, that they might be able to open up and, and, and allow us to really reach and talk to them about you know, how they feel. It's how they want to reach the heart of the issue. In Park Hill, Ian Hardwick, WHAS 11, on your side. And we do have a full list of kickoff events for this Saturday and then the rest of the summer youth programs running into August on our website right now. You can find it at whas11.com. Well, let's talk more about a closer look here at summer safety. Again, we are in the period known as the 100 deadliest days for teenagers. From Memorial Day until Labor Day, there's a sharp increase in car deaths involving teens. In 2022 alone, 790 people were killed in car crashes, which is a 10% increase from 2019. According to AAA, risky driving behaviors like speeding, texting, and running red lights are the top contributors to teenagers and unsafe driving. Uh, they encourage teenagers and parents to practice safe driving by buckling up, putting up your uh, cell phones, and follow all of the road signs. Clark County's top health officer says he is concerned about EMS coverage in the area. Dr. Eric Yazel posted a letter on social media discussing the current shortage at New Chapel EMS. That's the agency founded by former Clark County Sheriff Jamie Knoll, who is now in jail. In the letter, Yazel says they have instituted several initiatives to mitigate the strain on the system from New Chapel's current shortage and protect citizens if the issues worsen. Yazel says the health department's allowing alternative providers to give service for transfers and non-emergencies and maximizing resources to other partners who help with EMS response. He goes on to say since June 1st, one prolonged response time of 20 minutes has been reported. Yazel says they will continue to monitor those times. And today, New Chapel EMS is responding, saying they are plagued by the same shortages EMS providers faced nationwide. They also said they're working to provide quality care to Clark County. They shared their recent dropped contract with New Albany Township provided a new option for them, saying while we were disappointed to no longer be serving New Albany Township, we viewed this as an opportunity to expand our capabilities in Clark County. Accordingly, staffing plans were developed to immediately integrate those employees into New Chapel's Clark County operations. They did say some employees decided to leave New Chapel and join the New Albany Township Fire Department instead. As a precaution, they have notified other community partners. And a heads up for you about a big traffic alert. Lanes on I-64 eastbound are going to be closing overnight tonight to repair the damage that happened from a serious semi-crash. You may remember this happened on the Cochran Hill Tunnel. This is just east of downtown back in January involving a semi and a garbage truck. Uh, it was a fiery crash and to repair the damage to the pavement. Again, damage by the fire. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet says that the lanes from Beals Branch Road to mile marker number 10 near Cannons Lane are going to close at 8 p.m. tonight. The on-ramp from Grinstead to 64 East will also close about that time. All lanes are scheduled to reopen by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, so check in with us here on Good Morning Kentucky, and we'll be giving you updates on this. Well, a gorgeous afternoon across Kentuckiana. The sun is shining for the first time in a few days. We aren't talking about <laughs> any kind of thunderstorms and even a little bit of improvement in that humidity. Uh, Colleen Peterson is joining us here in Colleen. It is time for summertime. Everybody wants to get out of the lakes, the Ohio River and around the pools. And finally, you've got the uh, sun to go along with it. Yeah, it's a great day to do that in tomorrow as well. This weekend, we are increasing the rain chances for Saturday and Sunday. But if you were out around noon, it still probably felt a little bit humid. But now the dew points are going from the 60s to the 50s. After that front push through, that dryer is rushing in. It usually takes about 12 to 24 hours to really start to feel the drier condition. So it'll be comfortable by tomorrow afternoon. Blue skies right now, only a few clouds out there. Right now we're clocking in a temperature of 85 degrees here in downtown, 82 over in Bowman. We're in summertime, so of course it's going to feel warm in the month of June. 
but I think the humidity is the most important part. So if you have any plans outside, maybe having dinner on the patio, it's going to feel a little warm at 6 o'clock. By 8 p.m., temperatures will be in the upper 70s and low 80s, and a very pleasant overnight ahead. Temperatures are going to stay in the 60s. Tomorrow afternoon, beautiful sunshine, barely any clouds up in the sky, maybe a few high-level clouds, but overall nothing but sunny skies for your Friday. Now we have a little bit of a change on Saturday. We are now tracking a wave of rain. This isn't even an organized system, so just expect some scattered showers Saturday midday throughout the afternoon. I'm going to time out those showers a little bit closer here coming up shortly. Doug Shea. An emotional day today in Normandy, France, commemorating one of the most pivotal moments in modern history, D-Day, 80 years ago. On June 6, 1944, when the Allied forces stormed the French beach invasion that helped defeat Nazi Germany during World War II. Today, President Joe Biden and the First Lady Dr. Jill Biden joining other world leaders to meet with remaining survivors, then laying a wreath at the American cemetery paying their respects to the more than 4,400 who lost their lives, many of them Americans. The French President Emmanuel Macron representing 11 U.S. veterans with France's Legion of Honor. President Biden at one point appearing to wipe away tears. And I'll let what happened here be lost in the silence of the years to come. We must remember it, must honor it, and live it. And we must remember the fact that they were heroes here that day does not absolve us from what we have to do today. Democracy is never guaranteed. Well, the president going on to compare the fight against the Nazis to Russia's present war with Ukraine, saying democracy is more at risk around the world than at any point since the end of World War II. And it has been a full week of observances across Europe for these veterans as service members pay tribute and thank them for their sacrifices. Yesterday, 300 American, British and Belgian paratroopers landed in a historic D-Day drop zone where thousands of planes once delivered Allied soldiers to this pivotal battle. It's absolutely a uh, privilege to, to be here today. Um, my my great-great-uncle um, was here uh, on D-Day, landed at Sword Beach. Throughout the week, there have been vigils and lighting ceremonies, even a moment for the pigeons. 250 pigeons were released yesterday to honor the many birds who carried messages for the Allies during the war. 